Hey, what's going on, Rattlers? So I'm down here in San Diego, and you know, I'll tell you, one of the videos that I really love making for this channel are reptile shop tours. So I'm here at Pet Kingdom here in downtown San Diego. This is one of the largest reptile shops on the West Coast. So I'm heading in to meet with Andrew, the manager of Pet Kingdom, and he's gonna give us a tour of, again, one of the largest reptile shops on the West Coast. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, so this is Andrew Brown. You are the manager here at Pet Kingdom. Uh, how long have you been working here? So I've been here for a total of 11 years, uh, 10 years with the new management, um, Matt. Yep, And uh, who's not feeling well today, otherwise yeah, he would've been uh, here. Yeah, he's sick, he's out, so he's got me filling in for him today. Uh, cool, cool. Yeah, I've been here for about 10 years now, taking care of you know all of the, all the critters, doing all the cages for them. And, all the general cleanup, you know. Fantastic, and so this is one of the biggest reptile shops in Southern California. Yes, sir. That's uh, as far as I know, we're one of the larger ones on the West Coast. Um, we got hundreds and hundreds of animals. We get new inventory in every single month, different animals, all sorts of fun stuff. So we're going to start at this end. We're going to go all the way down, and it goes all the way that way. But over here, you have one of my favorite tortoises. This is the, the red foot tortoises. We just got them in a few days ago. They're eating great. We've got them on some uh, little uh, pro series pellets for them. So they're munching that down. We got some salad for them that we just started this morning. This guy seems like he's climbing out of his little den there. Yeah, to yeah. To everybody. He uh, is climbing out of bed. All right, it's pretty early in the morning here. Yeah, red foots are amazing. They are really popular tortoises, but people need to understand that when they buy a little guy like this, these guys are going to get pretty sizable, yeah, you know? Yeah, typically I've seen them get up into that range. You know, I have a few breeding pairs at the house. Some of the Bolivians, you know, I, they get really big. Right. Know, absolutely giant tortoise, you know. Even comparable to some of the smaller sulcatas, you know. They're definitely a larger tortoise in the long run. You know, but they're slow-growing species, you know. Mine, mine didn't reach anything close to a football for about nine years, eight years, you know. Right, right. It takes a while, but they do get big. All right, so down here, we've got this Russian tortoise that, well, he looks like he loves you. This is, so this is Max. This is one of our boarding animals. We do take care of people's pets as well. Um, so that's one of our things that we take, you know, we do here at Pet Kingdom is we board your animals. You got a bearded dragon, tortoise. We'll figure it out. We do take care of uh, many, many pets. That's really cool, actually. Mm -hmm. So this is somebody's pet, and why is he so angry? Uh, so I believe what the thing is, is they're, he's trying to breed. He's trying. He's thinking everything. He's being very dominant. He might be smelling some of the pheromones from the other tortoises, potentially. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Max has been pretty saucy. He stayed with us before, and he seems like he uh, stays pretty, uh, yeah. pretty nippy. It he seems, he like. seems like a saucy Russian there. Yeah, for sure. All right, so down in this enclosure, we've got some really nice leopard tortoises. Now, these aren't for sale, so these are Matt, the owners? Yeah, so we just got these in. This is going to be some more of our breeder stock that goes out to our ranch. Uh, so this is one of the girls that just came in, and then we believe that this is another future female. So we're going to add these to our our breeder stock and hopefully get a bunch of more animals for you to sell you guys. Awesome. We got some Nigerian Euromastics. Oh, I gotta check these guys out. Yeah, absolutely. Love the Euromastics. Yeah, these are one of my favorites. It's a glorified tortoise without a shell. That's exactly right. The jaw pressure on these guys is what gets me. Right. Just unbelievable amount of like clamping force. Well, in the wild, they're cracking seeds open with that mouth and... Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's part of the gig, yeah. That's why I keep a lot of like different millets and bird feeds and stuff in there because they definitely like to eat it. You know? Gotcha, so you're using that as substrate. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it definitely doubles in. Seems like it keeps them a little more plump, you know, when we bring them in. Definitely puts some weight on them a little faster. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely think that this is going to be one of the trending animals that comes out in the next, you know, several years when people start establishing breeding colonies yep, of them. Yep. I definitely think that these are going to be super, super popular. I agree. Very I agree. underrated animal. I mean, look at him. Been with us for two seconds. Totally I don't know how chill. many bearded dragons, you know, that right. are even this mellow, you know, when we when we sell the little babies, you know, that takes time to get them like this, you know, this is a little, 
baby euro and they're already pretty mellow. Yeah, but people have to know to keep them hot. So if you want to know how hot to keep Euromastics, check out Euromastics in the Wild, a video I shot in southern Israel where I went and saw these in the wild. Man, you have got to keep these guys hot. So we run a 120 degrees in our hot spot on the rocks, on the ceramic rocks that we run, or the slate. And then typically our cold sides, I run them as hot as 87 to 90 degrees. So moving on, we have this really awesome rhino iguana. So this is a high blue line. You know, Matt, the owner, has a 4.6 last I check you know, breeding group basically that he has lined up out at the ranch. And this is one of the iguanas that he produces, which comes out with extremely, extremely blue bars when they're when they're born and when they're colored up and they're a lot warmer, they do have more of a blue tinge to them from top to bottom. Right, right. So it's, you know, it's just a selective breeding thing is all that is. We're sure. trying to produce higher blues in the animal and, you know, take away less of the grays. You know? Yeah, he's a little aggro there. Yeah, he's not too happy with me pulling him out in the morning. You know, he's waking up. Everybody around here doesn't seem like they're uh, too happy in, right. the, in the morning when they're waking up. Well, what people have to understand is that it's really warm in their enclosures, and then you pull them out, and it's what twenty to forty degrees exactly. cooler out here. Kind of the shock, right? And, exactly. It's the shock and aspect of it from pulling him out, getting him out from under his little warm rock. Yeah. Oh, what a cute little dude! Absolutely gorgeous. Cool. All right, so we'll put the rhino iguana back. We're just going to turn around. We have some giant Europlatus. These guys are so amazing. Yeah, those are one of my, my personal favorite lizards that we, that we carry. Uh, these guys are the longest species of lizard on the planet. Is, or sorry, gecko species. Right, one. right. So longest species of gecko. And then you have the uh, Lichianus, which is the heaviest species of gecko that you get. So these guys are very, very acrobatic. It's unbelievable how far these guys can actually leap and jump. One of my, definitely my favorite species for sure. So these are really amazing geckos. They're, they get bigger than this, but you can definitely see why these are called leaf-tailed geckos. And people just call them Europlatus based on the scientific name, but these are giant Madagascar leaf-tailed geckos. And again, look at that tail. You can definitely see why they're called leaf-tailed geckos. So this is Fred, our Australian frilled dragon. He's been with us for about nine years now. He's one of my senior lizards that we keep on display here. So I've, you know, we just kind of keep him as a friend. He's one of our hangout pets that's been with us for a long time. And we try to love Fred and, you know, he's just kind of a good display animal to show people what they're working Woo with. Woo, he thought my finger was a worm there. <laughs> Fred's got some uh, nice big teeth in there. And when yeah, he's, they uh, do. I would hate to get bit by him. I have yet to be bit by him, but. I would hate to be bit by him. Absolutely. So look at this frill here. Hi, Fred. I'm just going to play with your frill. So look at how red that frill is. And in the Australian frilled dragons, that red is conducive to an Australian as opposed to the New Guinea frilled dragons that we you know, Correct. often see in, in pet shops. Yeah, the, the, the Aussies are definitely a lot more colorful, for sure. Um, the display factor on them is a lot more impressive. Right. Fred's definitely... And they're bigger. Yeah, absolutely. They can get up to 30 inches as far as I've seen. All right, so that's Fred, and uh, he's not for sale here. He's just a pet shop pet, isn't he? Correct, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. One, of our, one of our favorites. Nice. All right, and then moving down this aisle, we've got, look at this, so many day geckos. These aren't really seen a lot in uh, the pet trade, are they? No, he's been pretty unique. That's actually the second one that I've had in here in the past nine years, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised you saw that one. Usually they get overlooked again. It's one of those animals, you know. Right. I'm always looking out for the funky monkeys and... Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, Standings Day geckos are awesome, but, you know, you kind of see these around. They're really cool, but man, this guy really caught my eye because you just don't see a lot of Kachi Day geckos around. So behind us here... I see you're uh, boarding some bearded dragons here. Yep, a lot more of our boarding and pets that we that we have come through on a weekly basis. Some of these are military, you know, families that come through. San Diego, you know, long yep. Long term, yep, absolutely. So you know, some of these guys are going to be here for with us for quite a while. Like Gre old Greg here has been with us for almost two months now, and you know, we take care of them just like one in the family. You know. Right on. I've just got to see your gargoyle geckos. I'm getting into gargoyle geckos big time right now. So this is the breeding colony that we've had for 
well over nine years now, and it honestly seems like they're just now ramping up in production. Oh, look at that. So we've got some guys hiding down here. We've got a, looks like a red blotch. Yep. Then we've got, looks like a big old pregnant striped female. Oh, she is mega gravid. I couldn't believe how long it took these guys to start producing. Like they went on, we've, so I had them for, gosh, about three years here. Never got one egg out of them. Don't, don't know why, rained on them, heat, cool, heat, cool. All sorts of tricks to try to get them to reproduce. And out of nowhere, they they started breeding, you know, three years later, and they haven't stopped. I get uh, several eggs a week out of the tank with them now, and it's all about the age and the size. Yep, absolutely. It yep. seems like the the older they've gotten, they've definitely been more consistent absolutely. on the production. 100%. I think people try to breed them way too early, right? And right. Then they get frustrated and they get disappointed. Yep. But yeah, it's all about the age and size of Patience. these guys. Patience. Yeah, you got something that's got a 30 year lifespan. I mean, you can't expect it to happen overnight. Right. All right, so moving around the corner to the snake wall here. The, the ball wall. The ball wall, love it. Yeah, the ball wall. So we've got all sorts of fun stuff over here. That's our male tank. We've got some anything that's gonna be separated out in singles are all gonna be our females that are for sale. So we got quite the quite the variety. Anything from babies. We got Doom Rolls Bowie, one of my, again, one of my personal favorites. You know, if you want a larger snake, but not something too large. Right. Well, okay, you have Dominican Reds up here. Talk about another rare and underrated snake. Man, these guys are cool. Yeah, once they're switched over off of the lizards, you know, we got them on pinkies or you know rats and everything. We'll set, we'll let them go, you know. Right, right. They're fairly, you know, fairly difficult to take care of when they are eating all the little anoles and all that noise. So that's uh, you know, something that we try to do for people. Well, and I think that a lot of people that you know keep just like a basic ball python or a boa, and then they graduate up to something that you need to you know scent pinkies or Absolutely. mice or whatever. Absolutely. You know, and I think for beginners to do that, it's really daunting and uh, it scares a lot of people away. They just kind of want that plug and play Absolutely. reptile. It that, definitely makes the transition right. easier for them. Absolutely. Right, right. But with the more work that you do, the, the more awesome the animals that you can work with. Right. Yeah, that was, that was well said. Uh, oh, and look at this big berm down here. So this is het green, but man, I would love to see this as a hypo green. That would be amazing. And then I love how you have your incubator on display so that your customers can come in and see these eggs incubating, if not it, hatching, if the timing it, is right. It's, it's a huge draw. I mean, look at we got some hatching right now. We got more of, a, like I said, our in-house corn snakes that they can see being born and then they can purchase, you know, it's very cool for them. Look at all those pippin. Look at this. So stupid fun. It's really fun for people to come in and, you know, get to see these things hatching and then have, you know, the education behind it, how it was incubated. Yeah. The humidity contents, all sorts of fun stuff, you know. And, you know, to pass that knowledge on to the customer when they have questions about it, it's always fun too, you know. That's awesome. Not a lot of people, you know, grow up and then they get to go into a pet store. When I was younger, this was not a thing. Absolutely, you, you know? and so many reptile shops have this in the back yep. and not on display so that people can see them. So, all right, so moving on to this enclosure, this is amazing. This is our Emerald Tree Boa and Grandis Day Gecko display that we have. Oh, look so at we've that. We've got you some uh, Tinctorious Dart Frogs in here as well. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that, you got a waterfall going down. Man, that is awesome. You've got a puma sitting right there. So this guy's probably eating all the plastic deer in the house. Wow, but look at that guy. You gotta love an emerald tree boa. But this is such an incredible enclosure. And what did you say, you have Grandis in here? So there's our, our high red Grandis day geckos. We have the, the emerald tree boa, and then there are some tinctorious uh, dark frogs. Yeah, I see one down, down there. Well. We've got all, all sorts of critters just cohabitating in here. You know? All right, and then we've got this monster retic. Look at that beauty. Now, Lady Lavender is one of our star attractions here, by no question. She gets, she has like a strict cult following here. You know, everybody comes in, wants to see her, when she eats, the schedule, when she's getting to shed. Everybody that comes in here brings their kids. I mean, we've got guys coming in here for 17 years now that's seen her when she was a little squirt coming out of the incubator. and. Now she's our 125 pound-ish, 17 foot main attraction down here. They got to see her grow up. Absolutely. That's awesome That's that fun. you have those kind of customers that have been with you for that long. Lifetime, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's great. Absolutely.
So one of the things that I really love about touring really awesome reptile shops like this is seeing all the cool stuff that they have in the back room that is not on display to the public. Excuse pups. Excuse me puppies. Excuse me. All right, I will stop and pet the puppies. You always have to stop and pet the pups. Every shop has like shop dogs. It's so awesome. Yeah, here I will give you a, I will give you a pet too. All right. Excuse pups. Excuse. Excuse. Sorry. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Oh, you want to come with? All right, fine, come with. <laughs> All right, what do we got back here? So this is one of our gravid female boas that we keep on site. But she is just as gravid yeah, as she come. is. Look at that triangle-shaped body. Yeah, I got a little bit. Wow, and now what does she have for? So this is one of our hypo head albinos, and then we think that this is a coral line of albino that we're working with. So oh, fantastic. Yeah, so she's kind of exciting you know a little reverse stripe going on nothing too crazy as far as this one's concerned you know one of the more affordable babies that sure. we can put out here at the shop for everybody oh yeah this is one of our females that just had babies this year this is one of our sun glow females that we have on site again she had a healthy litter of about 22 babies i believe so she'll probably go again this coming year too and then we'll give her a year off of breeding gotcha that's smart to do you know a lot of people just breed them every single year and sometimes that's not the healthiest way to do it oh wow look at this beauty so this is one of my personal sharp coral glow females she should be due we're going to breed this one and pair it this year we're going to go with a super fire Marin Salmon Abbey fe uh, male, sorry. Yep. And hopefully we'll prove out some, uh, make it some incredible triple heads and all sorts of fun stuff and get that, that nice coral spread out in the awesome. gene pool. This is Chunk, and Chunk absolutely loves me. Look at this. Look at this. All right, we gotta, we gotta continue there, Chunk. So we've got just some of our ball pythons back here that we breed. So, of course, it's going to move all the paper everywhere. Yeah, of course. So this is one of our pastel hidden gene Womas. That is also a Mojave, I believe. I'd have to check cue card to make sure I'm right. It uh, looks a little Mojave-ish. Yeah, make sure all the, the all the, the big-time ball python guys out there don't <laughs> know. You know. So this is just, we, we produce, uh, you know, mainly boas here. But, you know, we got to go where the industry's at. And, you know, ball pythons are definitely the trend animal. They're the king. There's yeah, going to be nothing top that's going to replace them. Top of the food chain as far as uh, the pet snake goes. Absolutely. Oh, look at this. All right, so I just saw the label on this guy. Had to check him out. This is a T-positive Mexican king. Yeah, so as far as I know, there's only two guys really producing these in California or in the United States as far as I I've know. Seen. Yeah, so Big Mike, again, at Basically Boas, a big shout out there to Big Mike. Um, we work with him a lot on his columbrid side of the fence that he produces, and this just happens to be one of the personal breeders that we're trying to take in. That, again, we it's a family thing around here. So Big Mike is part of the family. He decided to, you know, bless us with one of his T-positive Mexican kings. And Man, that is amazing. Yeah, this will be one of our future studs in the in the future. Wow, we, that is the first one I have ever seen. Wow. Very incredible. Fantastic. So guys, I just want to thank Matt and Andrew for showing us this really amazing reptile shop. Again, this is one of the biggest reptile shops on the West Coast. So if you live in Southern California, it is well worth the trip to come here to Pet Kingdom and see this incredible reptile shop. So anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.